Salam solidarity. Salam Sabah Maju Jaya. Kepada semua yang hadir. I don't know whether I should speak in English or bahasa or bahasa or Tionghoa. Campur-campur ya. Well anyway, uh, thank you for attending this session. Uh, sorry. Actually, we are told to observe SOP because of COVID. Uh, so the seat is limited. But anyway, if you can be, carilah tempat duduk kalau boleh. Uh, we can open the window so we don't get the COVID to fly around. <laughs> I appreciate your coming here and uh, try to synchronize our thinking because the issue of NCA or the Nature Conservation Agreement have been have become a very controversial subject uh, of late, and uh, this has been uh, partly because of the uh, COP twenty six happening, Borneo had the Borneo and all others lah. But uh, I don't blame anybody because, first of all, uh, there was no publicity, and there is a reason for that. And I have explained it, actually. Uh, the main reason was that uh, we want to have an impactful policy, uh, a penny shift on New Year, uh, January, uh, so that uh, the people would know that we are doing something new. Uh, that is the first reason uh, we do not want to create a publicity until the right moment. Second, uh, because of the COP26, we had to to hurry it up. And uh, third, we want to see that uh, we, there's no hanky panky lah. We want to make sure there's some, some fruits of it so that when we make the announcement on the January, there would be some uh, positive news for the people already to say that it's real and it's coming. And this is not a bullshit thing. That is the other reason. But it has been dragging on to the point that the, the, the time for implementation was now so short. Imagine to announce something in January and you haven't started implementing. What kind of result are we going to announce in January? This thing is nothing new. It started three years ago. Yeah, in fact, it started maybe uh, 10, 20 years ago. Not that, uh, maybe uh, 15 years, 20 years. Uh, this issue of carbon had been mentioned when I was the director of Yasan Sabah. But, and uh, we were told about uh, carbon compensation at the time. And we started with New England uh, in, in uh, in Boston. And that's how we come up with real the reduced impact logging at the time when I was still near San Sabah. But at the time, nobody really paid attention to what carbon is. And uh, all they know is, well, 
uh, we need to be compensated. Uh, uh, this, this factory need to pay us uh, for conservation uh, because these factories are uh, apparently destroying the apparently the uh, the environment lah, so to speak, polluting lah at that time. And uh, so a long time happened since 30 years. I was uh, in Yasan Sabah. I was put in jail in 1994. If you imagine 19, eh, 1991 up to now, how many years? 40? 40 years. And uh, when it come today, we talk about the concern of the, the world. The concern of the world is climate change. This is the number one uh, agenda of the United Nations now uh, to combat climate change because climate change is real. And uh, you can see a phenomenon uh, around the world, uh, sudden flood in New York, in provinces of China, which never had that kind of flood. In, in Sugut, you know, uh, unusual rainfall in, within six hours, and then having those all kinds of things happening. And more floods now than ever before. Uh, and uh, more rain now than ever before. And more fires than ever before around the world. So, number one agenda of the, uh, of the United Nations is how to combat climate change and to reduce the temperature uh, with, by one to two degrees. Because now uh, uh, the, the world is sitting up, the ice are melting, the sea levels are rising, and uh, therefore, how to combat the climate change? They have now identified that the culprit for climate change are the factories, uh, the all the oil companies, and thirteen percent have are contributed by forest degradation. So uh, scientists have. Uh, I've been asked to do some research, also not just to identify this problem, but to look at nat nature. What is the value of nature to life? What is the value of nature? Uh, what is the contribution of nature to economic our economic life? And uh, uh, they have come up with something like thirty to fifty-four trillion, but we always say uh, air is free, water is free, we get the rain and all this, but actually they are not free. E, science has tracked that the ambun and water from our forest is traceable to Australia. It gives rain to Australia. So we cut the trees here. Mati lah orang di Australia, sebab tiada air. And it's, the world is connected. Yeah? And uh, so, therefore, now uh, people are paying for conservation. We are lucky because we still have forests, even though our forests are degraded, uh, but we still have them. We still have forests uh, and so on. And uh, uh, these forests have been the mainstay of our economy in, uh, in those days, uh, bringing us uh, billions of dollars. Not that big, one, one maybe two billion. Uh, uh, somebody, uh, Richard Thomas, will give us some briefing on, on how uh, this industry has become a sunset industry. Uh, we are now only receiving less than 200 million ringgit annually from 
our about 4 million hectares of forest. Less than 200 million ringgit. Yeah. And so, uh, you look at Yasan Sabah, for example, they don't have forest anymore. They don't have forest to log. Okay. I am very sad. I'm also very guilty because I was a part of those, uh, the industry that actually uh, cut the forest. Now, uh, I see the other way around. Mga tubus dosa juga ini. Dosa-dosa kita. Uh, to restore the, the forest. Regenerate the forest. And at the same time, we contribute to uh, preserving the climate uh, uh, of the world. And the world is going to pay uh, for their sins uh, in polluting the world. And uh, we are in a position to do that. Uh, this is another reason. And the other reason is I look at you, uh, maybe may, most of you are Sabahan. Uh, I look at Sabah. How do we develop Sabah? We have been doing the same thing over and over again, but our income is not rising. Poverty is rising. We have lots of money at the federal level. Our share of revenue should run into billions. But for the last 58 years, for the last 40 to 50 years, they have not paid what should be our share of the revenue. So they have this policy of uh, kamakmuran bersama. How do we gain from the kamakmuran bersama? If the treatment of Sabah is the same thing, you know, uh, they give us 5.2 billion. How to develop Sabah? How to uh, solve our problem? Then we have the Sabah Maju Jaya. Sabah Maju Jaya, depending, dependent on our revenue, our total revenue right now is about 4.8 billion, maybe 5 billion this, this year. Uh, even that is considered the highest over the history. But how much is left to, for us to contribute to Sabah Maju Jaya development? There's nothing left. So I have to think. We all have to think. How do we develop Sabah? How do we make a difference to develop Sabah uh, and reduce its poverty and so on? So we go to federal, they don't give us because we are too dependent on them. We bising-bising, they cengak kau. Pisit kau punya belabak. So we cannot, we cannot do that because we are dependent. So I was thinking and we discussed this among our leaders. The only thing we can do is increase our capacity, financial capacity, revenue capacity. When we have the capacity to develop and we are less dependent, then they tidak boleh pisit balabak sudah. Then we can demand. But how do we, where do we find the money? So we found that there is money. And this is from something that we can control, that is land and forest is constitutionally under the state. So instead of the cutting the forest, now we conserve. We contribute to climate change. This money that the United Nations mandate all the countries to, to achieve, including the companies, all these polluters, they have to pay. That's where we get the money, right? So uh, roughly, I give you a rough, roughly lah. Uh, each hectare of forest is averagely can generate about 20 tons of carbon. 
And averagely, each ton is $20 US. Okay? So, meaning that one hectare can produce $400 uh, revenue. Right? US. So, you, if, if it is 1 million hectares, 400 times uh, 1 million is 400 million US. That translates to roughly 1.6 billion. Uh, yeah. So imagine you can get from 1 million hectares of forest, we can get 1.6 billion of revenue compared to 4 million hectares and they get less than 200 million ringgit right now. So if it is 2 million, we are not talking about 4 million putting all in one basket. Yeah, only 2 million. And uh, even the 2 million, we are uh, pilot project thing 600,000 first to see the result. Okay? So 2 million will be 3.2 billion. Yeah? Of course, only 70% of that. Lah. And 30% uh, goes to the platform and all these uh, companies that organizes uh, all these things. Uh, don't forget, a lot of people don't understand. Carbon is not a physical thing like this bottle. Eh? You cannot say, okay, I sell you this. This is carbon. You think the buyer will believe you? No. Science has to come in it. Okay? The first thing is science. It must, it must uh, be... Uh, uh, the science must come up with how much carbon. Okay? And the off-takers, the buyer must have his own scientist, scientific group to verify that what this group A says is verified, verifiable and true. Okay? And then it needs to be, the auditor has to come in. Okay? That this, trans, this is a global edit auditor assigned by the United Nations. Okay? Uh, so everything is above board. Be you know why? Because the, the United Nations doesn't want government to misuse the fund that you receive. It has to be used for the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. It has to be used for that purpose. Because this is not uh, money that A gives to B for nothing. It, they are all tied up to objective, uh, global objective. Okay, so now uh, what do we, the government give? The government only need to, co to conserve. Yeah, why 100 years? Because the forest need to, to grow 60 to 100 years. Okay. People say, wah, oh, takut ini, ini forest karena kasih orang company karena kasih lease lah. There is no such thing as leasing. This is a government conservation and this group of company who have their own expertise do the connection, the platform for trading so that they can come up with the result. Okay, that's why there is this revenue sharing uh, on that basis. Now, um, when uh, COP26, uh, 26, I know. yeah, uh, in Europe uh, happened, uh, we have to rush this thing over there and 
of course, there is this uh, Borneo, when you had the Borneo conference, and there's suddenly this thing that leaked. Lah. Uh, apa boleh buat lah? Because the, uh, I mean, there's nothing that we want to hide, but uh, because at the same time, we want to promote it in Europe. And uh, in Europe, you know, the effect of this has been very, very, what we call uh, beyond expectation. Because apparently, Sabah is the first country in the world to, to actually implement what all the, uh, the countries have been asked to do. But we are the first country to do it. So this has been looked at positively by the world. And there are Brabut sudah ini. Brabut. Brabut want to make a deal with Sabah, want to make a deal uh, with the NCA. So, uh, so we will get more than that because when there is, there is a bidding, the, the prices will go up. So I think we will get more revenue than what we expect. Lah. But beyond that, the state doesn't lose anything. We are not pledging anything. We are not putting any money there. We are not... Uh, apa ini? We are not losing anything. In fact, the forest is still there for the future generation. The forest will regenerate. The river will re be restored to life. And tourism will f flourish. So we will get more revenues from tourism because the world will come here, want to come here. I heard Bill Gates wants to come here, hopefully lah. Want to see the forest, uh, the wildlife, and so on. So we have this treasure, uh, and uh, we will not only save the environment; we will save the forest for future generation. In fact. I tell you, science now is so advanced that in the future, even though Sabah is rich in terms of minerals, uh, di bawah tanah, gold, platinum, whatever, we have coal. But please, we don't want to damage our environment. I know there are many people who are eyeing this gold Gold daripada Tawau, riding through the interior, right up to the Kudat. We are rich, but we don't have to dig those. In the future, science will just identify them and monetize them without digging. Okay, so, uh, and then uh, uh, some of the people say, uh, Allah, ini ini kena kasih tanah kena kasih bagi sama uh, Tierra Australia lah. Actually, nothing to do with Tierra. It is Hawk Standard. Okay, why Hawk Standard? Because Hawk Standard is Singapore. Uh, and a Singapore platform will be acceptable to the US, Western, and to China. This is very important. Uh, there must be accept, accept, acceptability. And also why? Because Singapore is a triple A. They operate on the global level. Okay? Malaysia punya rating sekarang, I think B. B. And uh, it will not be attractive uh, to the world. <coughs> so, we want to pull Sabah up. You know the per capita GDP of Sabah compared to the nation. National punya GDP is uh, 12,000 US dollars. National GDP per capita. Sabah is way, way, way down. 6,000 USD per capita. We are very sad that that is happening. So when we do that, we can then help to push our development 
under our own control to make sure that Sabah Maju Jaya is become Sabah Maju Jaya Plus. And the shift is the shift in green economic policy. <coughs> this is not COVID, huh? I think that I will stop there. This is just an introduction. Uh, I will stop there and uh, I will invite uh, Richard, are you here? Oh. Uh, present a little bit on, uh, on the concept and also uh, what has been happening now. Okay. I will talk about the rest later because I am only talking about half of what is the future. All right. Please. All right. Uh, thank you, Dato Sri. Um, I'm supposed to open the floor. and uh, <laughs> But thank, nevertheless, thank you uh, for the... Quite a brilliant uh, opening speech, uh, Dr. Sri. Um, first of all, good morning, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members of uh, NGOs, Datu and Datins. Um, we are all gathered here today uh, for none other than uh, one reason to hear a briefing uh, from Datu Sri Datu Panima about the Nature Capital Agreement. And with him today is a panel um, from a stakeholder. On my far right is Datuk Martin Indang. Allow me to introduce him. And next to me is Mr. Richard Thomas, who will be given uh, shortly the um, presentation about the nature capital. And of course, Datuk Sri Panglima, Deputy Chief Minister. Uh, he will add more um, briefing uh, later after this. Before we uh, start further, um, allow me to just uh, let everyone know about the simple uh, housekeeping. Uh, just to respect the flow, um, and of course the program flows uh, thereafter. Um, there will be three uh, wireless microphone on the far uh, table where you don't have the permanent microphone. All right, uh, feel free to ask question uh, later on. Uh, allow the main speakers uh, to complete the, the briefing first, then you can go ahead and ask questions later. And thereafter, there will be a press conference, uh, say about 12.30, 12.45, depending on uh, how long we're going to finish later. And then also, please uh, respect the floor by uh, not throwing uh, harsh words or sensitive words. Um, please be kind. <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you so much. And most of all, uh, your handphone. Uh, appreciate if you can put on silent mode so there will be no interruptions. So uh, without uh, further ado, allow me to introduce Mr. Richard Thomas for his uh, first presentation. Thank you. Uh, first of all, um, thank you very much, Dr. Sri and the organizers. And a very, very good morning to Datu, Datu, Datin, Datin. Ladies and gentlemen, I am actually um, invited to speak, well, probably knowing my background, um, as you can see in that uh, screen there. But basically, I am a DDT. I hope that's a, 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 an acronym for Dusundarat Tambunan. Uh, some sometimes people refer to that as duduk dekat tajau. Whatever it is, um, I was born and I saw the woods. Can't remember when, but probably I must be about two, three years old. I was born very close to the forest. And then I was always in the forest and later on, after finishing my Form 5, I went to school. But before going to school, again, doing my tertiary education, I was actually employed to cut the forest. And the first 
I used to cut wood, but that is only for, you know, house construction, for kayo, api, and all those things. Well, the kampong, that was when I saw the woods. But then when I started uh, cutting trees for timber, way back during Tun Mustafa's time. Now, then I was very happy because I had some job, but uh, actually it's not supposed to be a happy one. Because later on in life, after spending most of my life in the forest, and I've seen what happened to the forest from a pristine condition, I've seen all the palanoks, I've seen all the whatever you have, I've seen all what is good about nature. And I prefer to be a naturalist still. And that is when I saw the forest. The forest in Sabah. The pristine forest way back in the 70s. See, if you'd allow me just to talk a little bit about what my feeling now is, I want you to have a feeling of what I feel. Too. Just imagine you're used to the forest. And then at one time, when actually I travel all around Sabah, you know, just mention, you know, Long Pasia, yeah, Kalabakan. Even even what Agnes Keith was talking about in her book in 1933. I've seen those places because I was in Kalabakan. I was in Ulusagama. I was in Kwamut. So I could actually feel what she was trying to tell us then about the Orang Murods and about all these people, you know, in Aborigines. Uh, they call it in Australia, but here we call it Orang Asli, of course. And the first Tajan a film, actually, was even then somewhere around Kwamut area. You see? So all of these things, you know, feeling about the forest, the feeling about the environment, feel about the clean water. And actually, I was doing some bad things about it. So later on, after seeing all this, after seeing that actually if I go from KK or even Tambunan, right to um, Sandakan, going to work there, it's about, it takes me some 7 o'clock in the morning and then reach about 5 o'clock in the evening. And I see all the forest, pristine. Then after my also contribution to felling the trees, what can you see now? You'll be seeing a lot of kalapa sawitan. Um, it's very, very disheartening actually to see all these things happening and the last from 1970s to now is 2020, right? Now, I had some contribution to good forestry, actually. When I learned about the environment, we actually tried to do something good about it. And that is why the first reduced impact logging through New England Power Company of USA, through also futuristic um, leaders like Dr. Jeff, that time when he was still in Yerisazaba. You see, we try to do reduce and logging. That means to say that we want to take care of the environment while actually still getting some timber out of it. And at the same time, in logged forest, we actually did also face foundation that is also uh, have to do something with all this carbon here. Now, if you look at the reduce impact logging, it's actually to reduce the impact, meaning to say that you have to actually reduce whatever the adverse impact to the environment would be, but still getting money. You see, but in degraded forest, you know, you have to also grow trees. But Face Foundation actually is basically another thing because you're talking about restoring the forest, but then later on coming back to log it. Timber still is there. But when you talk about NCA, it is not that. You're talking about rebuilding the forest and it's really conserved as nature conservation areas. Now we want to go back there and then put some more timbers that is good for absorbing carbon. So there is no such things like you are taking away whatever is inside. Actually, you are replanting, you are getting all these orangutans to go, being, to go back there. All the whatever you are talking about, all the uh, environmental kind of things, it's good for the environment. It's complementing actually. But um, let me tell you something about my experience in how bad the forest was. 
I was invited by then director of EPD. That's uh, that we rejoined that year 2000 and the dance set. And to, to actually um, author the first EIA guidelines on forest clearance and timber harvesting. You know. So we had those guidelines. That means that shows that the contributions towards uh, looking at the, the environment is actually already there. Even starting when Dr. Jeffrey was actually still the director of Yes and Sabah, and that was 1990, I can remember. But of course, why did it not go through? I mean, all this carbon then, because there was no platform, no trading platform. Even though they might have many, many verifiers to come in and say, okay, actually they are practicing this thing. But there is no way that the traders can come in and say, okay, this is the price of carbon. So that is why um, recently about, well, I say it's recently, but actually four years ago, this project actually, the NCA kind of project was actually um, proposed to the government then, that was Warisan, and actually they got a quite a good response out of it. Um, Datu Madio Stanga was then very informed about this, while it was done under SEDCO as the Sabah Economic Development Corporation. But that didn't go through, as you can all see. Uh, now, again, when another government came in and I said, why don't we still go on with that? This is good for Sabah. And there we are now at the moment. But uh, then I think I would have to probably go to my slide now. It's actually just, I'll just read through so that it doesn't take a lot of time. I don't want to explain a lot of things there. But okay, okay, go for the, uh, these are the things that I saw in the forestry departments, uh, you know, annual report. You see the forest, for, uh, Sabah Forest Reserve, you can see there. Sabah Forest Reserve is about 3.5 million hectares, right? Sabah Forest Reserve. So that would include the seven classes there, if you can remember well, from class one to class seven. And you can see also there in class three, I think, I don't have good eyes here, but I think that's called domestic forest reserve. So you see, we thank the forest department for being a very good stewardship of the Sabah Forest. He started in way back during the colonial days, where they only had about probably two, two uh, classes of forest. Now we have about seven. So what I see here is they are the authority, they are still public, and they are doing a good job. The only thing is, of course, uh, if you look at that thing now, you, you see the red, you see the dark green, and you see the light green. So the light green would actually be the existing FMUs. We are not touching that. What we are talking about is only the, the, the areas that are colored green at the moment, unless other FMU holders later on see that it's a good thing to do, they might join us. But at the moment, that is concentrated to what we call totally protected areas, meaning to say that we are complementing to conserve the nature there and even enhance it. So I was also with the wildlife, I mean, uh, uh, WWF in 2017 doing some studies uh, and also with uh, all these environmental people. And what we are actually trying to do is actually to meet all the necessary things and all the requirements of the general environmental groups, including economic groups. So you have to actually go in right in, in, in the middle, actually. So, but uh, when you talk about permanent forest reserves and then later on you reclassify them again into a class one forest reserve, I must tell you that most of the green areas there used to also have been logged heavily. You see, understand that, right? Except for Malayao, if I have a painter there, could I have a painter so that I could probably, but probably most of the people here actually uh, sees this uh, 
maps. But never mind, all the green, okay? The green to the left, actually, that's, that's where you can see like a, a boo or what do you call that? That's true Mar Marie Forest Reserve. That's about 80 to 19,000 hectares. Used to be under class one forest reserve. Then because it was degraded, it's turned into protection forest. See? Rosemary Forest Reserve. Down, you, you're looking at the western part of Sabah, okay? The first big green there actually is the Rosemary Forest Reserve. The next time you go down south a little bit, that's the Punxiangan Forest Reserve. And it is also the same. It's all logged heavily. Logged heavily means there is no more timber, you see? You still have the forest, you have woods, yes. You don't have the timber. So when people talk about forest, they're just talking about timber, usually. But we are talking about, thank you very much. Help me very much. How do I put it? Okay, better now? Uh, this is the Trus Mari Forest Reserve. See, Bagagar Batangan Orang Tua. Ini kata lah. Putih rambut. Then the one here is actually the Bersiangan Forest Reserve. This is the Malayau Basin Allah. I cannot be very... Siapa yang ada pegang bagus ni? Dia ada minum tapai bini. Gila. Now, and then you're talking about this Danum here, right? And the groups of Tawai and all these things. I've gone through all these places. So you look at all these, uh, you know, like uh, the Tabin wildlife. Uh, this one, I, I, this is just forest reserves. You must understand that this is forest reserves. Huh? The, the seven classes of forest reserves right there. So what we're talking about, when you talk about NCA here, we're talking about this green, dark green. And I mentioned earlier, what's happening here? Oh, thanks. So I wouldn't dwell too much on that, but I think uh, very much pretty much. The next slide, please. Now, you see the same area, right? Actually, it's not. You see now that it, what is included when they call about totally protected areas, it includes the Sabah parks now. If you, can you go back to the, 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 the last one? You see, you don't see the Sabah park there because that's forest reserve. Those are just forest reserves, so in forest reserves only. Now, again, proceed to the next slide. Now you can see Sabah parks now. You see, so, I mean, what we're talking about, 2 million hectares probably at all those uh, that I was talk about in, uh, is probably talking at all those things. But make sure that they are all protected forests, right? Okay, next, please. Uh, okay, next slide. Okay, so I'll just read through this because I don't want to dwell too much on all this. I think that too. Sri Panglima has a lot of things to talk about. I'll just talk about these operations here. Okay, I'm, again, I mentioned that I am talking as a forester, environmentalist, and an indigenous person, okay? Class two forest reserve, everybody understands that that's commercial forest reserve. That's equal to timber production. Now, that's only about 1.4 million hectares now, but that those are all, most of them actually is under the FMUs, not inclusive of the green areas, the dark green areas, you see? That's not inclusive of that. And you can see that it's actually the mainstay of the economy of Sabah, now gone, now gone, really gone. And then I used to remember when uh, Dr. Mahathir, then the Prime Minister, he went to Dharmakot and he said, he was asking uh, all the people there, you used to come to Samananjung, Malaysia with a big uh, James Bond bag full of money, he said, now where are they? He was asking that. That was in 1997, you know. That means he already know that there is no more timber. You see? So, even if you talk about uh, uh, FMUs, uh, I think FMU forest management units, right? That was an agreement entered into by the state government and the individual holders for 100 years. Remember that, for 100 years. 
Now, even the SFM now does not, right? they can't work anymore because they don't have revenue. They don't have the timber to cut. You see? So what do they do? They're just spending money there without getting any revenue. A lot of them are now shunning. I mean, they, they want to get out of the system, actually. So then how do we continue to rely upon the timber and that depleted forest to maintain some economy? There is no way if you still talk about timber. There is no way. They will go another days. It doesn't take two nights for big timbers to grow. It will take at least 60, 200 years. And that is why the Sustainable Forest Management License Agreement of 1997 was actually given because of uh, 200, uh, 100 years because of that. And now, if, when you think about um, the NCA now, what if you can give someone with has the right to cut timber to give them 100 years, why not for conservation? You should go for perpetuity, right? Perpetuity is the main game, actually, here, and getting money from there. Now, that is why we need to have a, a, a big paradigm shift you know, to in our forest management strategies uh, in order for us to be still uh, uh, um, relevant in the world economy or even to get out of this poor state condition of Saba. Next, please. I'm just trying to show you something here, which everybody, I don't know if you know all about this, but you can see the most, the, the biggest revenue that you actually got from forest was that's the thing. There was 1.1 billion ringgit. So if you say that uh, timber was good then and giving us a lot of money, that's not really true when you see uh, the, the, the new economy coming in, in terms of carbon. But it, what is important here to look at is the declining trend, you see? If you look at that, even though the SP said it's about 200 million, that could be correct. But according to the statistics that's taken from the forestry fact sheets, Last year, it was only 110 million. Okay, next. So, what do we do with the degraded forest? Conserve TPS, that is what it is. It is conserved. But when you conserve these forests, do you get anything out of it? Of course, you've got all this intangible. You talk about all this wildlife, fauna, flora, everything. We all understand that we come from the same group of people. We are on the same thing here. It's all about environment. And environment as environment, you're also talking about global climate change, you see. So what is there to talk about in terms of going against this kind of thing when it's actually good for everybody? Changing forest management strategies, that is really impactful to the sub economy still, even though without timber. Huh? So you have to turn the timber depleted forest into a money-making asset. How do you do that? This is what we are trying to do here for the people of Sabah. To turn the declining forest revenue trade into an ascending track strategy, you know, we want to make it good again without cutting timber. Next, please. So we have to employ dynamic forest management strategies, all right? So even, even though it's timber depleted, it is still a rainforest, you must understand that. And how many rainforests do you have actually in the whole world? You see? So take advantage of that. Take advantage, take the opportunity, especially with now the growing concern for climate change. Make use of it, although people might be saying, now if you do this, you will be letting all these polluters continue pollut uh, polluting. I think that is also correct, but that is too much. When you talk about our individual life, you use your cars coming here, right? You're also polluting. I smoke, I also pollute. I contour, I also pollute. So, I mean, what are we talking about here? Are you, <laughs> are you saying that because we are doing this NCA, you are letting other people pollute? Polluting us now because we also have a polluting. So we at least, if you want to go for a net zero kind of pollution, you have to at least have a contribution. So now, when you take opportunity, you get from the. Just remember, this is already a class one forest reserve. You see, 
is already protected. And the class one, and having said class one, it has gone through the process of gazettement. Right? Because the government just cannot gazette forest without including all these uh, uh, stakeholders like, you know, NCRs and whatever you have. They are all counted there already. That's gone through the process. It's already there. I mean, we just coming in and say, okay, can we actually market these things, you know, so that you get some money. This is, the, I mean, I, I'm a forester here, so I'm talking about that. If I were a forester, I would do this, actually. Mr. So, Richard, sorry. Uh, you stayed down there with AAA rating. Do we, have we already obtained that? Not us. We want to have that. So in order to have that, that is why we need to build the platform of Singapore. Is this a financial rating or are you looking financial at rating financial and rating? And also uh, carbon rating. It, this kind of rating actually is, to me, I'm, I'm not quite good at this, but these are done by scientists, all these uh, investment people, you know, all these, whatever you call it, Julius Bar, KPMG, you know, uh, this PWC, Price Auto Cost Coopers, all this. I'm not good at this. This is not my forte, of course, but I'm just trying to respond in a way. I hope that is still okay. Huh? <laughs> but you're talking about a bankable asset here. And with a, a bankable asset, that means everything has to follow to be bankable, you see. The way you write your documentation, everything, your verification and everything is not an easy job to do. I think Malaysia, as DSP was mentioning, only has a rating of something like B, B, B minus. Now, how do you then get Sabah to have a triple A? You have to ride on with people with good ratings. And that's why Singapore actually is coming in. Okay, so the NC concept actually is applicable to any forest, you know. So I was actually thinking, even in, in my own kampung, I said, how many acres of land do you have? He said, 15 acres. Are you actually toiling all that land? Are you actually opening it all for your, 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 your use? You know, or whatever. He said, no, you can't, because all my kids now are actually working somewhere in, in, in town. And you see, you've got lots of forest there. It's in an easy title. He cannot do anything on it because he doesn't have all the five hands that he needs. So why don't we just actually say, get someone to qualify and look at the carbon there and if you then talk about getting so much money per annum. And then, goyang kaki lah. Sambil, uh, goyang kaki sambil apa itu? Uh, sambil mi minum, minum, tumpung, kan? Ada juga pendapatan lah. Okay. So it's applicable to all forests. Huh? The only thing is that we want to do a pilot one. And that's why we, it's actually inside a totally protected area. All right, next, please. I, I hope I'm not bothering, uh, I mean, uh, you know, I'm bored, not boring, but everybody has seen this. It's just taken from Google Earth map. You see the green there, right? What do you think of that green? If you could actually turn all that, not all, because some would actually be for, uh, for production of food. So that is why 50 over percent of Saba is only for forest itself, you know, and the rest actually would be for other, other land uses. But you look at that, it's all green. And then a lot of people who are actually looking at carbon would be saying, hey, one hit Saba, this is tropical rainforest, you know, most unique places on earth. Uh, that is where we <laughs> will try to work on how to go about it. Okay, next please. Now, this is nature capital, if you can just read if you want. I won't be going through all those. I think most of you here know. But this is the definition from World Forum on Natural Capital. Okay. You need more time or just go glimpse through? Okay. But you can see the drawing also there. They get some idea of what it is. Okay. Next, please. Okay. Then the NC is, of course, a new concept. You talk about this global climate change and everything, you know. So here, actually, I just wanted to go through them, but I think most of us understand this. Uh, what is important here is actually to look at probably bullet point number two, sequestration, cutting trees, emits carbon also, reduces number of trees that absorb carbon, that kind of thing, quite technical, but then you talk about conserving forests, sequester carbon. That's why we're getting money for uh, you know, conserving our forests. 
Now, and the last one is because Saba is in a strategic position, you know, and I mentioned the FMA, first mover advantage. When you say that, it's like a franchise, you know, and that was three. Actually, already mentioned that, you know, the first in the world. Now, what does that mean to you? If you're in the market country, you're first in the market, look at that. Why don't we go? We are poor country, you know. Sabah is poorest in Malaysia. Why don't we go for this? You know, okay. So, next, please. Okay, uh, just to give you some, uh, you know, just some feeling of, you know, the global common emission. I won't be going through all that. But China is 10 gigaton per year. USA, India, and Russian. Okay, uh, next, please. And then global carbon emission still, you're talking about in terms of China coal and all those. I see. 100 companies are responsible for 70, what's that? 72% of carbon emission globally. <coughs> okay, so we are actually in the best position to be able to help carbon, climate, you know, carbon and climate, we are, we are very, I mean, we are blessed with this kind of, even though the timber is gone, we still have those forests. Okay, next please. Now, and then that's really just a technical, you know, drawing of all what this is. I think you can also Google them. No need to explain a lot of that thing. Next please. And uh, a little bit about what I was saying about reducing backlogging. You see, 91, 1996. And then the Face Foundation is ongoing still, but they are not getting a lot of money because they are not in a platform. That's what they're trying to do now, to go into the platform, and that's using Singapore. This is all about marketing and, you know, all this. What do you call that thing? The stock market and things like that, you know. That's also the digital asset exchange, DAX, they call it. It's working 24-7, they say, 7 to 7, that kind of thing. I am not quite sure of that because I'm, I'm not involved in that. But you see, the issues there is actually monetization, marketing, and trading platform. That's why I, I, I was there before, and I understand what is actually not quite right there in terms of the platform. There is no trading platform. They just like I ask somebody to when they go and, uh, you know, go and verify it, but actually there is no trading platform. That's the most important thing. Okay, next please. Uh, nature conservation. You see, this is nature conservation. That's why we call it nature conservation agreement. They are all in compliance with whatever you've written about there. United Nations Convention, your FCC, you know, all the teams, IUC, NWBS, whatever you call it. It's all there. You can just Google them. All right. Next please. And you see the next. Uh, uh, um, it's talk about 3.5 million. Let's say, for example, if everybody wants to go for that thing, you're talking about a lot of money. Through nature conservation without cutting a single tree. That's the most righteous approach to address global warming, right? Next, please. And you see some kind of compar comparative kind of analysis here. Forest revenue comparison, okay. And the left side actually is the forest revenue that was regenerated from 1984 to 2020. And you can see the declining trend, but if you see in the right side, which is actually we haven't started yet and everybody is having a hoo-ha out of it, you can say, you see the, the, the what do you call that? The, the grid there. If you look at the left side, you're talking about also billion, but the most it can go is 1.4 billion only. You look at nature capital, you are looking at, if you start with 600,000 hectares, you're talking about almost bigger than what the forest department's uh, revenue is at the moment. You're talking about, about almost 672 million already. And that's only 600,000 hectares, you know. Now, if you go to full blast for 2 million and you look at the year six, because we think that we can actually improve the market, that's why we've got Singapore coming in there, triple A, old PwC, you'll be seeing a lot of improvement and you're running into billions, you know, never ever before achieved by any logging. Even if you compare the whole 
history of logging in Sabah. You can see it now. I mean, this is our analysis. Okay, next please. And on top of that also, because all of this actually through the United Nations, you see, you can see this achievement of sustainable, for, I mean, I mean, sustainable uh, uh, development goals for the UN. You see, no poverty, you know, zero hunger, all this health and everything else, right up to number 17, which is all partnership. And this is a partnership that you're talking about, partnership. So they all comply with all these things. You look at all this uh, life on uh, um, I mean, on land, life in, in the water, all that is taken care of. All right. Next, please. So I just want to conclude it by saying that the NCA to me as a forester, as a naturalist or environmentalist, as an indigenous person of Sabah, the agreement is to conserve Sabah's nature is a righteous approach to manage our forest heritage real, while still getting revenues, yet without cutting a single tree and taking care of our ailing planet and all mankind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Richard. So uh, I guess... Uh, Everyone has a lot of uh, questions already, but uh, allow me to introduce uh, the main speakers of today first before you guys go ahead and ask questions. Um, I would like to invite uh, Datuk Sri, Dr. Jeffrey, Datuk Sri Panglima, Datuk, Dr. Jeffrey Kitingan uh, to go ahead and Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you, I have said uh, a lot of things at the beginning. Uh, now that you have heard the other portion, I still have another portion, but <laughs> uh, it will be I'll be saying it later, lah. Meaning uh, this uh, issue of uh, FPIC, nah? free, apa itu? Prior. Inform, yeah. Uh, this has been a concern, and I am not surprised because whenever you talk about forest, uh, this is among the concern that uh, we always uh, raise. But I can assure you that the issue of uh, the native and the NCR have long been uh, a penny uh, resolve when the forest first become a forest reserve. Uh, because it's also in the forest enactment to ensure that uh, the natives are informed and also they are, uh, their rights are not uh, affected. And besides that, this uh, enactment had been taken to the Legislative Assembly uh, to be debated before the Forest Reserve were approved. Uh, so all this had been uh, taken into consideration long before. Because what we are talking about is already is a Forest Reserve anyway. It's a totally protected areas. So it is nothing new that suddenly we take this portion and inside that portion of forest, uh, uh, people living there, kampung and all this lah. Uh, it's not like that. Okay? And after all, saya pun orang kampung juga. I have been also advocating to ensure that native rights are not affected. In fact, uh, what is happening over the years has been encroachment. Encroachment of uh, people, including natives, into the protected areas, the forest reserve. Uh, sometimes they don't be able to, you know, to, apa itu, gaharu, 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 eh? 
gaharo di uh, akan tangkap uh, they are claims on uh, on an area uh, where they say they have been living there and now it has become a forest reserve and they have already planted rubber trees or oil palm and the forest department uh, uh, have, have apa ini destroy this uh, plantation uh, i was one of those defenders to to say that why should you do that there should be a way to uh, to allow this uh, native to live in the forest and uh, uh, you know uh, proceed with their life uh, in order to because they they need the forest at uh, the same time they need the forest to hunt uh, but they also need to plan and so on so uh, this have now been resolved because some of these people are given uh, uh, replace replacement for their plantation agricultural land and so on because forest reserve by by law is prohibited from being applied for agriculture purposes uh, they are state lands that can be used for that and uh, there is now even uh, recently cabinet had decided to allow even roads to be built in, through the forest reserve to ensure that uh, uh, it be it facilitate the movement of people uh, between uh, forest reserve yeah between one side to the other side uh, so the other thing that I want to mention here is that the nature capital agreement also provides for the nature conservation plan. Okay. In other words, there is a plan also how this uh, NCA area will be safeguarded and properly managed. And therefore, uh, there will be three thousand to five thousand ranges to be to be uh, employed to ensure there is no encroachment. Nah. and also uh, their duties, among others, also to ensure that every tree is counted and enumerated. Yeah, uh, there is satellite, there uh, there is AI and so on, but on the ground uh, also. Uh, this is uh, required work. Apart from the forest uh, reserve uh, that generates uh, absorption of carbon, actually there is uh, another area they call Bakau, the swamp. They have the Bakau. Huh? They can generate uh, blue carbon and therefore the value is six times the normal carbon. Uh, and uh, we have in Sabah about 350,000 hectares, I think, of, uh, of uh, Bakau. And uh, this is something that the government can look at as potential revenue owner. Right now, zero, zero revenue. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, some people potong-potong untuk firewoods and so on, sayang. They actually very valuable, uh, and uh, corals have the the most uh, valuable blue carbon. Could be more than six times, could be ten times uh, the value. So that means yeah, coral. That means we have to preserve our coral as well, uh, and not to uh, destroy them. And uh, this. This, uh, when we look at the, the whole world, Sabah is only a very small, this two, two million is very, very tiny. Compare that to Indonesia, compare that to Amazon and all this. Uh, we are very small. So, but we are the first. Therefore, uh, that gives us an advantage. So our forest will be packaged 
package together with all the other forests in Indonesia so that the uh, the whole world will ride on that same platform okay and me it means that uh, uh, we will then benefit also from the all the rest of the world that ride on that same platform and uh, this is uh, good for us uh, in fact uh, Indonesia they have this what they call uh, conserve Indonesia blueprint uh, they are also going to do the same thing yeah but because of COVID we had the fortune to do it first kalau bukan COVID sudah all maybe they will be first than us okay uh, so we become the first because these people uh, focused here uh, rather than some other places even Australia, they have, I don't know, 30 over a million hectares. They don't have forest, but there is carbon underground. Uh, even 10 cent pun is, uh, is money. 10 cent US per hectare. Compare that to 400 US per hectare, our, our forest. Yeah? And uh, the other portion that I have not talk, spoken about is nature capital, non-carbon. The non-carbon asset is far more valuable than carbon. Okay, far more valuable. And science is still uh, trying to find a standard valuation per hectare of nature capital. But at the moment, we are looking at it like 1,000 US dollar per hectare lah. Uh, minimum. Uh, let's say uh, 1,000. If we 2 million hectares, that means we have 2 billion extra revenue. Okay? 2, mil, uh, two billion uh, USD. That means it, it, it translates to 8 billion ringgit under 2 million hectares. You add that to the 3.2 billion, that's more than 10 billion. But that only come into stream by maybe about three or four years. Yeah. And uh, that is minimum, minimum. Why it's so valuable? Because it's giving and sustaining life. It's called ecosystem services that they give us, they give to, to life. And uh, uh, it may run into billions later on. Uh, so... Uh, that one will come and stream later on. So I want to tell you the advantages of this. And therefore, I think before you ask any questions, I want to conclude this <coughs> by asking your opinion whether we should go ahead with this or not. Okay. Ah, uh, We signed already, but because a lot of negative things, but actually it's our fault we didn't publicize lah. Uh, akun juga. Tapi there is a reason is to have an impactful uh, announcement in January. Uh, now, apa lagi mau announce in January? Huh? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, actually, it's been signed. It's legally binding, but it's we needed the designated area. It was, yeah, yeah. We need to have the addendum, uh, and then we need to have the uh, implementing uh, mechanism. Uh, the first thing that we need is data room. We need to have data, most important. Uh, because part of this uh, data will be uh, used to uh, to check on the accuracy of the information. Uh, and then under that, they, we need to have a joint monitoring and coordination committee. Yeah, They must be uh, monitoring and coordination to ensure that we're on track with what we have signed now. 
uh, that includes uh, uh, the nature capital management plan. There must be a, a group doing that to, 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 to monitor this work, the NCMP. Second, the financial compliance. Okay, there must be a, a, a body, a task force to ensure uh, the financial compliance. Yeah? Uh, the third one is the sustainable development goal compliance of the UN. That the money is used for this purpose, you know, uh, not some other purpose, not in somebody's pocket. Actually, we avoided to have a, a tripartite agreement because some people were suggested a tripartite agreement, another party. So what is that other party doing? Very questionable. So we want it to be a two party only. And then uh, talk about operational matters. And uh, this is very important uh, to ensure that what we do is uh, no hanky panky. Uh, so go ahead, ah, huh? yeah. What's up? Huh? Agreement, lah. Or the conservation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I please, please. yeah. Yeah, we are. Hello, Tato, thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting us. And uh, we are very happy with saving you know, the forest, uh, helping in climate change. I think we are not so concerned so much of the what you have spoken. But what we are not really happy, uh, we are not transparent, is the deal. We want to know where we stand in the deal for Saba, for the future of Saba. Can, can we have an answer on that? Where do we stand, you mean? See, I can answer this question. What, what we see is that the deal in terms of carbon, in terms of the right people uh, helping us or helping Saba in terms of the transpa transparency of the deal right? and the company and the due diligence all this we want to be uh, know about it, you know. Okay. So that we know we are, we do not want to have Saba having another problem in the years to come. Yeah. We want to be sure that our future generations are safeguarded and they have a way out also. You know, something tied to them and there's a problem in the future and we cannot wow. get a way out. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Okay, I understand. Okay, uh, in the agreement, there is a provision for termination. Eh? Uh, if the company fail to perform, perform, perform uh, as stated, then they will be terminated. There is also a standard uh, policy uh, by the government that any contract that not implemented within two years automatically uh, will be terminated. So all this uh, already in place. Lah. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was yeah. Me. According yeah. to the laws of Malaysia or Singapore, because this agreement is according to the laws of Singapore. So, uh, okay, okay. Uh, the the issue on the on the land and forest is on the laws of Malaysia, uh, and specifically Sabah. But on the laws of the of the carbon, because. It's an international issue. We don't have the expertise. It is based on uh, 
law of Singapore. But before they go to court, there is a provision for mediation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that is three. Good morning. Uh, I'm Alexander Yi, representing SEPA, which is uh, Sabah Environmental Protection Association. I would like to register our thank uh, for your organizing this event to get feedback from us. Huh? Uh, I think we appreciate this session that you would like to get feedback from us. There is a circulated fact sheet of the Sabah Nature Conservation Agreement going around in the social media dated on the 13th November. I wonder if you have received it. And uh, can you verify whether that fact sheet is actually accurate or not? I, sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, there is a fact sheet. Uh, uh, oh, fact sheet. Yeah. Yes, on the uh, Sabah Nature Conservation Agreement, yes. yeah, dated on the 13th of November, uh, circulating in the social media. I'm just wondering if uh, Dr. Sri have actually seen that and you can verify the content, whether it is accurate. Or is there anything you would like to add to it or, or take away from it? Okay. Are you the source of this? No, 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 no. I'm not the source. I'm not the source. That's why, actually, a lot of us. I would like to know whether you are the source of this fact sheet. No, I've already told you I'm not the source of the fact sheet. No, no. Listen, listen to me. You are Datu Matena. I'm, I'm here to actually try and find out the source of this fact sheet. And trying to ask respectfully the three to actually verify this fact sheet. This, this is my question to him. So you don't pose the question back to me. No, no, no. Uh, I, I, think, I think whoever is answering, I, I will get to you in a minute. I'm just directing okay. to Dr. Sri right now. Um, you see, I, no, hang on. Hey, uh, please, please, wait. Hey, hello, hello. Uh, please. Hang on, uh, let's see. I'm let's asking just a question myself. I am here on the invitation of Dr. Jeff. Dr. Jeffrey is my leader. He's a native of Tambunan. I am from Tambunan and I'm native. So I have an interest here to be able to give some sharing on, on what has transpired so far, so far during this, uh, during this meeting. So I would like to actually find out, because I've not seen the fact sheet, I would like to know who is the source of this fact sheet. Um, because it is a flyer. And highly defamatory. Actually, if we uh, have the source, then maybe. It I'm can so be, sorry. Can we can just introduce yourself? I, I'm I'm Martin Idang. I'm a former High Court judge, and now I'm retired. That's okay. why I'm here. Okay, but you're not speaking on behalf of the government because we are dealing no, with no, government am, issue here. I am also an interested party. No, as a native from 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 Tumuran. Actually, Dr. Martin, right. why don't you let me pose the question? It's a genuine question because. A lot of my question is actually based on this. If Dr. Sri were to say, actually, these are defamatory and we shouldn't use this, then I've got no more questions. You see, this, this, is, this is the whole intention. That's why I started off. I appreciate the openness down here. I'm not here to pick a fight. Honestly, I'm not. I just want to know whether the fact sheet that has been circulating around contains truth or not. Or it is not. Please help to change it. Yeah. Who exactly is this guy, Dr. Sri? Just a minute, okay, just a minute, okay, the fact sheet, I haven't seen in the, what it is all about, and uh, as you say, if there is a need to be incorrect, then we'll put it right, lah. okay, yeah, all right, thank you. Maybe we should read it? So oh. for everybody to hear? Yeah. And uh, if you want to read it, that means you own it. Lah. It, it, it's actually... Uh, it's been yeah. and, never mind. Uh, we will go through it. And if it is... Yeah. Can you pass, pass it to us? Yeah. Uh, can you pass it? And then you can put it up there. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Maybe hello. Uh, can we? Can I? Can I just? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I, I don't need an expert advice down here. Please, hello. I don't need an expert advice down here. I'm still having a dialogue with Dr. Sri down here. Uh, Dr. Sri, the the fact sheet actually contained uh, leak information on the agreement that the state of government have gone into as far as uh, Hawk Standard Private Limited is concerned. I have just. Based on this, because we have not seen it, um, just some concerns that I have. There's just some concerns that I have. Is that the designated area is mentioned down there has not been uh, confirmed right now, but we are looking at about two hundred uh, two million hectares. Is that correct? No. Hello, six hundred uh, thousand. And uh, once the government is satisfied, then it will go up to two million. Yeah. So uh, then uh, the facts sheet, uh, the designated area has yet to be properly designated because uh, some of the areas may need to be out, some of uh, area need to be put in. So we cannot talk about the fact sheet before it is completed. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sri, I'm a social activist. We know each other anyway. Um, like what we were talking about the fact sheet, there are a lot of details there that is very, very disturbing because it's very lopsided. However, we give you the benefit of the doubt, all right? And then we're very happy that you have the vision to want to do uh, this conservation. However, I'm very curious. I don't see any government officers here. And you've been talking about your own personal, um, what is this, uh, what, what is this, your, your own personal experience and your own personal, like, um, both of them are from Tambunan. But uh, dealing with, with, with government, yeah. We're talking with about Sabah, our government land. You're talking about Sabah land, and you are representing the government, but I don't see any government. Actually, uh, yeah, we have invited uh, forest direct, uh, conservator. We have invited the uh, uh, state attorney general, and uh, uh, they happen to be uh, engaged in something else, like AG is with the 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 Makama. Uh, uh, Rayuan uh, happen to be here at the moment. Uh, okay, and uh, I uh, represent the government here. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Sri, I think what, what I would do is, uh, on behalf of uh, SEPA, we will, we will not proceed to uh, flow our questions down here because then it is not fair because we have not verified the fact sheet with you. Uh, but uh, suffice to say that our, our stand down here will be this, um, seeing the track record that you have fighting for the rights of Sabah and really concerned with uh, Sabahan. You honestly have gone through a lot. Uh, we don't doubt that. We ask that you put on hold this agreement first because it is for 100 years. I'm not sure whether that is correct either. For 100 years. That encompasses about four to five generations. Uh, and it also, the fact sheet also mentioned that in the event there's a change of administration as well as change of government, this agreement will still continue. Uh, uh, suffice to say, when uh, you stood up for Sabah on the MA63 matters, a lot of it you are not satisfied that it has been pre ordained or pre agreed on our behalf that we can't do anything. Now, this agreement is steered towards that direction. We shouldn't be agreeing for future generations as to how they should be spending the natural reserves of Sabah. We think it's good enough that we will commit 20 to 30 years following the successful example of the FMU that Yasan Sabah has been doing as far as timber concession is concerned. So 100 years is a bit too long. So I respectfully ask you 
to put this in notes and reconsider it, but we will not proceed with the conversation because a lot of my question is based on the fact sheet, actually. Uh, if you have not seen it, uh, you probably need time to, to go through that. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> we take note of that. Thank you very much. Uh, at the same time, uh, you, you must make sure, I mean, you have to understand uh, the, the issue here is conservation. You cannot be conserving five years, 10 years. That's not conservation. Uh, and conservation for the future generation means you, you don't conserve it just for your, for your lifetime. You conserve it for the future. Uh, this is for the future. 50 years from now, 100 years from now, this future generation will have a better asset than what we have now. You know what I mean? And uh, we are also, you must remember that we are not locking in all the, the areas. Uh, we are leaving some areas for logging, for the industry, and so on. And also, uh, we want to find a way also to assist all the people in the kampong. They have land. You know, this, this, uh, this land can generate uh, income for them. Uh, and uh, there is a way to do that. Even the agriculture, this, this agriculture, they're like rubber. They, they have uh, carbon uh, capability. Uh, absorption capability and it, they also can generate income so why not we look at how this uh, issue of uh, uh, carbon that the world uh, is concerned about can I also seep into the population you know maybe even your carbon also your carbon also can generate some income yeah 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 Moto. Okay. Uh, DSP uh, my president has said that he will not proceed with the question, but I just want to add a little bit that this thing, if you put the statement there and are willing to answer, shoot one by one, whatever is wrong, he said, it gives you an opportunity to shoot down all the faults. You see, the, it must be stated that the opportunity was given to you all to shoot down the uh, faults. Uh, that's it. If you don't want to do it now, even after one or two days, yeah, yeah, sure. you can make a statement yeah. point by point. If it is wrong, state it. Because this is a concern raised by people. People are scared of the government. Mm. The government says there's freedom. But you should know there's no freedom after your speech. And you are a living example of what happened to you. So mm. people are still scared of the government. Whatever changes, the police are still the same. They wait our youth. Even when we sat somewhere and start singing, they wait. So to put to save to give you an opportunity, it's up to you to answer now or later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I I understand. Uh, Question from I mean, the park. Yeah. yeah, we we are all concerned, uh, as you know, and uh, uh, in this world, everything is relative. There's nothing absolute. Justice to me may not be justice to you. So we have to consider uh, uh, this kind of, uh, of relative justice. So uh, therefore, uh, we cannot impose your standard to everybody else's standard. Your happiness may not be the happiness of others. The, how the Kamung people view what you view may not be the same. So uh, don't try to impose something that uh, you think will be uh, the same as what other people see. Uh, we appreciate yeah. that, yeah. Dr. Sri, yeah. excuse me, because yeah. earlier on you were just speaking on your own personal capacity as well. So is your value the same as the value that we are thinking right now, where conservation is concerned, where transparency is concerned. That is why we are here to hear from yeah. you and then for perhaps to tell us 
what we have been getting, all the informations are based on, um, it's just rumors, they are not based on facts. So we want to know also earlier on, you said the agreement is legally binding. But at the same time, you're asking us whether we should go on with it. Because you are saying that there's so many negative um, feedback from the people. Now, that's exactly why we are here. We want to know how factual are the items that we have been received, we've been reading on the fact sheet. You know, if it's not true, maybe this is your chance to comfort us, to tell us it is not true. Because for one thing, it is not about the carbon trading that we are concerned. We are concerned about the deal. We are concerned about the company. We are concerned what is in the agreement because we are still trying to negotiate with, you know, like what is happening to us in MS63. So we are stuck. So likewise, this thing, we don't know the details. Okay, so, the, yeah. the, the, thank you very much. Do you think that I am not concerned of uh, the deal? Do you think I'm not concerned of the people? We are all concerned. Yeah, please let us know yeah. your concerns. Okay. We are all concerned, okay? Therefore, with that concern, we, we take everything into consideration to ensure that the what we call the 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 equilibrium of concern is achieved because there will be relative concern left and right. They must be equilibrium. That's what I mean. I have been uh, <laughs> a subject of injustices for all this while. So I maybe I have more concern for justice than you. You haven't gone through this. Oh. So some of you may have gone through. But have you been uh, uh, subjected to injustices like me? Have you been uh, in, in jail for three years? Have you been chased around like animals in the jungle by the authorities? Happy sure. Dr. Yeah. I is so Beverly German. And I represent the CSO platform for reform. Um, why we are here today is because we want to know what are the views of the Sabah state government when it comes to the NCA. And our primary concern here, Dr. Sri, is not how much money we can get, how much land or how much of the forest we can use for carbon uh, to, to deal with our carbon um, uh, deal. What we are concerned now it's for the uh, rights of, that is accorded in the FPIC, the free prior informed consent, right? So uh, we are very concerned of the process of how this deal came to. The deal came to because uh, we only knew of the deal when somebody wrote of it, and it came as a shock to us because we were not informed. So the consent here for Sabah Hans, for Sabah Hans, I see there are non sabahans here as well, but we welcome you anyway. And uh, the consent here for, the, for Sabahan to have 2 million hectares of our land, and we know it's not for cutting, we know. We know. You know, I'm reading the chat in the Zoom, and there's nobody moderating the Zoom here. There are questions and concerns being raised, and there are valid concerns of Sabahan who are not able to be here with us today. So the moderator of the Zoom, please go and check. They have raised issues there. So my concern here, Dr. Sri, is macam mana itu, itu uh, deal sudah kena sign sedangkan Sabahan tidak tahu pun tentang, tentang deal ini. Dan kalau deal ini dikatakan is good for Sabah, by all means, go ahead. If it is good for us, for the nation, please go ahead. But... The concern is, macam mana to deal sudah boleh kena sign, sedangkan kita tidak tahu pun pasal deal tu. So where is the FPIC here? And FPIC is part of UNDRIP, United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. And UN, uh, while UNDRIP is not legally binding, Dr. Tri, it is part of the federal constitution, it's also part of our Sabah constitution. To respect the rights of the people of Sabah. Thank you.
All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as I said uh, much earlier, uh, this is a forest reserve. And uh, before the, this forest reserve becomes a forest reserve, the law already requires the, the free, uh, the, F, the FPIC lah, huh? uh, has already uh, been done with. Uh, this is nothing, this, there is nothing new uh, that requires uh, another uh, apa ini, another exercise of that nature. Uh, besides that, this has been going on for the last three years actually uh, from the previous government uh, until now. Okay, so uh, because of the COVID situation, uh, I suppose uh, we we uh, cannot exercise what normally has been exercised, but uh, the law has required it and it has been done uh, when the forest reserve were, became a forest reserve, the forest enactment became a forest enactment. Uh, all this has already been done. So, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm also concerned uh, and uh, each time I go see floods, I talk to the people. I told them, why there is this flood? Because we cannot, uh, I mean, we cannot, this is nature. We cannot solve the flood without connecting ourselves to nature. Everything is connected. Therefore, I have to explain to them that we have to protect the environment. Don't cut the trees, you know, look after the rivers. And, uh, and all, of our, all of our places I go, I, I talk about it, but nobody pays attention, and not even the papers. But it's okay. Uh, and I, I, I fully uh, concur with uh, you that uh, uh, besides the money and all this, we need to take care of the concerns of the people. I'm with you, okay? Okay, right. Dr. Okay. Sri, I'm um, yeah. speaking on behalf of another concerned uh, member of society. Now, coming to terms with the reality that the agreement is already in force, right? The agreement begins on commencement date, Article uh, 3.1, assumed to be the day of signing. Once signed, it is legally enforceable in Singapore court. Okay. Under Article 10.2, the Sabah government covenant warrants and agree that they will continue to observe their obligations and shall not take any steps to terminate this agreement or do any act or make any omission which would render this agreement null and void. Now, if Sabah does not meet its implementation obligations, Sabah has already indemnified Article 14.4, the companies for all their loss, expenses, and damages for which they could sue for their costs to date and with greater difficulty for future lost income. Now, Sabah cannot argue that it was misled. You please correct me or correct whoever it is who sent this to me that it was misled or pressured politically under Article 15.1, this government had signed and that it has entered into this agreement on its own free will without any duress or cohesion and has taken all steps to satisfy itself to understand its obligations and the terms in this agreement. <clears throat> well, uh, as a background to that, uh the government, the chief minister, and the cabinet has already made a decision much earlier and uh, giving the chief minister 
the authority to deal with this. Okay, so the cabinet. Uh, Recording in progress. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, don't worry about that. Uh, it's all there. And as I said earlier, is there is a dispute uh, issue on land and forest, which is our concern, is Malaysian, uh, Malaysian law. An issue on carbon will be more on Singapore. But whenever there is a, a dispute, a disagreement, the first thing they do is discuss and resolve it through mediation. Okay, perhaps then maybe in the June, you can um, tell us to the general public and also the uh, other representatives um, a bit more of the, of the details because it's no longer a secret. And then another thing, perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about this company that you had signed with. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, the Dun sitting is coming. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just one thing, has it gone through the cabinet? Has it gone through the state assembly? Yeah. State assembly. The, the what? The cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. Only cabinet. Okay. Just one suggestion on the termination clause, Article 14. The, the whatever, if you terminate, you're supposed to pay compensation. The compensation should be quantitatively defined. Otherwise, we don't know how much compensation. Uh, uh, there should be a limit to compensation in uh, terms of yeah, money. Uh, in different. case, in case something happens and you have to terminate the how much is the what is the compensation can it be defined instead of leaving it open let them go to court and claim how much can it be defined so that uh, not too much That's we, all. we cannot define that because it's up to the court uh, to decide okay all right thank, thank you very much uh, thank you uh, yeah but, uh, uh, not just three. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, generally speaking, I think this is a very good idea. Uh, I I am quite um, I find the idea actually very appealing, and I think it's for the benefit of the state in the long run. Okay, subject to FPIC, which is free prior informed consent from the indigenous people of which I think in the whole area, which is the dim area, kan? Danum Imbak Meliau. Dim. I call it dim. Dan, uh, Danum Imbak Meliau. Bah. So, dim ya kok. Dharma kot. Yeah. But these are all in the center of Sabah, right? COS. Well, you talk about the Danum only Dhamma, we call it usually. Actually. It's also include which is actually oh, okay. So, All right. Anyway, so. so anyway, subject to FBIC, I think, I don't know if you haven't got it, I think you probably have to go and get it. Lah. But I think uh, knowing a little bit about the area, mm -hmm. I think probably the biggest community in that whole area is Inarat. Mm -hmm. Inarat, uh, Kampung Inarat. In the middle, um, yeah. that's uh, it's old Buffett actually. Yeah. It's old Buffett by this Malayaw. So the other thing is um, about the operational side, uh, talking about data quantification of carbon and it going to the marketplace, I think. Is that the reason why you, you need a, a, the, the, the engagement of the Singapore company to work out the details in the carbon market? And then um, having said that, is that the reason why uh, what is the rationale behind them getting 30%? Or if that is true, lah. I mean, this is what is going around is that the state government gets 70% and then the company gets 30%. Uh, is there a reason why this company should be getting 30%? Isn't this something which Sabahans within the uh, personnel and expertise that we have within the state, isn't that something which we can do ourselves? Well, uh, uh, this is a standard uh, rate uh, globally, so okay. that's why we we, we, uh, we have to just comply with it, lah. 
Uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, whatever uh, shortcomings, like the FPIC, the, the, we will uh, rectify lah. Uh, from uh, your feedback, we will uh, rectify uh, whatever is the feedback uh, from you lah. Uh, okay, and then after that, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, good morning, uh, uh, Dr. Sri. Uh, my name is Rekha. I'm from uh, WWF Malaysia. And uh, prior to coming to this meeting, thank you for inviting, uh, publicly inviting uh, uh, people to come to this meeting. Uh, meeting but prior to this we have also submitted um, a letter to that to three formally um, um, expressing our concerns about the the deal itself um, we see this um, the conservation value of this uh, agreement but we are concerned about the details of that uh, agreement yeah we, we are also privy no we have seen also the fact sheet that was circulating around and we are wondering about that as well, the, the accuracy of that. But uh, specifically, we were concerned about, um, in, in that letter, we express uh, concern about the process of uh, transparency, the ethic that has uh, been uh, mentioned uh, by many here. Uh, it has not been implemented. I mean, from it should be done from the beginning in, when, when that deal is first uh, conceived. Um, so we we expect that, and it seems that the area that involved is not just the TPAs, but also involved um, areas that is not class one uh, forest reserves. Uh, involved, it was mentioned just now, mangroves. A lot of communities actually dependent on mangroves for their livelihood. So I think that really bring up the point of epic that it need to be done to to ensure that communities affected um, is uh, also consulted. And secondly, we were concerned about um, the, the deal itself. You know, uh, you know Sabah, rightly, uh, you mentioned about Sabah getting more attention because of the policies that uh, Sabah have right now, like 50% uh, forest cover, 30% TPAs. These are all very um, good for um, conservation in Sabah and makes Sabah very attractive in terms of uh, carbon carbon uh, trading. But we and, and Sabah is is uh, going to be attractive, and there are more um, companies or even uh, in financial institutions that may come to Sabah that um, we don't have to stick to uh, one uh, companies that uh, or institution uh, financial institution to to make a very good. Uh, deal for us, and it's uh, 100 years, so we should really have a good deal. Um, uh, you know, uh, making sure that we all uh, benefit from from that. And and thirdly, I think this has also been men mentioned as well that due diligence on the on the financial institution involved, all the partners involved, and also on social uh, future socio economic activities. Um, we mentioned, there's a mention about natural capital just now. It's just not just about carbon trading in that, in that sense. It's about uh, water, our source of water. In the future, I think that's going to be quite uh, uh, important. So there's a, there's a need for due diligence on who we go with into, into this uh, deal. But there's a, there are also so many other questions. I think, I, I hope that you know, um, we submitted this uh, letter uh, we copied, we sent it to also your, uh, I think, private result. Um, we hope it get attention from uh, that to see. So, and actually, we, we hope that um, we can uh, we appeal to that to see to really con reconsider that uh, um, agreement. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, uh, it doesn't include other uh, areas outside of the TPA. Uh, the I mentioned about the Bakau, you know, uh, uh, swamp and so on, as as something to look into the future. Lah, it's not part of the TPA. It's not part of the NCA. 
Okay, so uh, don't worry about that. That is something you can think about for the future, uh, future potential, and uh, uh, of course, uh, all the things that you talk about, all the worries uh, will be taken into account. Um, the other concern uh, that you have uh, about the deal, yeah. Uh, why Singapore? I have already explained much earlier. Um, because they have the the platform, okay? They are the platform that is connected to the to the off takers. They have already identified who are the off takers. Yeah, and then the auditors, the verifiers, and also uh, uh, the global body of the United Nations that look into this particular aspect. So it, it, they all have a board because this is going to be blockchain. This is going to be blockchain and uh, the use of AI, machine learning will be applied, the satellite. Uh, so this A can counter check B and so on. So don't worry about this. We want it to be transparent. Yeah. We don't want to, because the, the thinking, the thinking right now is, is, uh, conventional thinking whenever you talk about forest they think it is logging they think it is surikai bala they think it is like fmu and so on uh it's far from it so yes uh, this one uh, because of the reason i explained earlier the transparency is uh, is is something that you you are raising here because there was a reason for it that I mentioned earlier, and uh, that is uh, why there is no public announcement yet, uh, even though discussion has taken place even three years ago. Uh, even uh, that to Samanan said that some of this thing took 10 years, okay, but it doesn't have to take that long now. Uh, and the current situation where science is all over the place. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you. Sorry, that was really to cut you. But uh, you uh, see can, can we give a chance to decide first? Yeah. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me here. My name is Darshan Singh. I'm a retiree. I was with the Sabah Foundation before dealing with community forestry project. Now, uh, with regard to this concept here, I think it is a very good concept where we can uh, put our asset to good use, where we don't destroy the asset and yet earn money out of it. The concept is fantastic. I think it is a good concept. I think the, the concerns from the uh, general public mostly is basically transparency, that's all. How was the deal brought about who are the parties involved? And a few other questions like 30% uh, goes to the company that brings in the, the uh, customer to buy the carbon. And 70% goes to the government. Uh, probably the question is, uh, how come the 30% is, could it be so much to be given to these companies? What are their roles? What are their obligations? Uh, the other question is, uh, with the 70% the government is getting, what is the government's obligation in terms of dealing with the forest that we are conserving? Do we have to pump in money to uh, regenerate the forest? Or if the forest is already existing there, actually there is no regeneration required because it is naturally growing by itself. It is already a locked up forest with carbon already available. Or do we have to put in more money to develop it? Uh, the other question is, what about the other party, the 30% uh, 
holder, what is their role? Um, do they have to bring in the collaborators to, to, to work in the conservation area, like Infapro or Real Concept or Face Foundation? Uh, and then again, uh, the other question is on the trading side, because this is carbon trading, isn't it? It's a buying and selling offset of carbon, uh, where uh, probably a company that purchased the carbon here, they may have excess credit, they would like to sell off the credit to another company. These tradings, how does it affect the revenue of Samba? Will the trading uh, uh, benefit only among the companies that is trading the credit, or some portion of it goes to Saba again? Uh, uh, the, the question arises here is how is the 70% determined? Uh, how much? Uh, what is the, the, that quantum? From where does it come? Uh, I think probably, basically, that is what it is. But okay. Generally, I think the concept is good. All right. Uh, uh, the responsibilities. The responsibilities of the government is to conserve. Okay. Make sure uh, there is no encroachment and so on. Uh, the responsibilities of the, the, the government also is when they receive the 70% gross revenue, they are supposed to use it to implement the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Okay, and the, th the 30%, which is a standard globally, uh, they respons their responsibility is Number one is to set up a platform, engage with the off-takers, then ensure there is the off-takers will go to the, they have their own science scientists, uh, they have to verify, so the, the, the scientific evaluation part so that they can agree on the pricing, for example, and agree that this uh, carbon is there. Uh, this is the part of the responsibility of the uh, of the the company. They also responsible to come up with the nature conservation management plan. And the nature conservation management plan is subject to the approval of the state. Okay. And uh, the, the cost of uh, implementing the Nature Conservation Management Plan is born jointly, mm. okay? Uh, jo born, joined jointly, uh, jointly by them. So this uh, employment of the, uh, the 3,000 to 5,000 ranges, uh, is the responsibility of the company. Okay, They have to take care of that, they have to pay and so on. And uh, it is uh, also uh, a joint responsibility for them to monitor, uh, to ensure that whatever they have agreed uh, it will be implemented lah, according to the agreement. And then uh, the government's responsibility also is to set up the data room, data room. Yeah, the, so to ensure that there is a data and uh, the company will also uh, come up with data capture. They have their satellite, AI and so on, the blockchains are to be the company jointly with the state. Okay? Yeah. I think we, hello. I think the, what most of us want to know is the, the word 30%, 70% profit sharing. It is very, have to be defined. Uh, it's not, sharing. not, it's not profit, huh? Revenue sharing, gross revenue sharing, not profit sharing. Yeah, I mean, if that can be explained, uh, we will also appreciate. Uh, 
I just want to ask, uh, in the interest of transparency, uh, is this going to be brought out in the day one and the next thing on the fourth? Is it going to be discussed at the DUN, this NCA? The idea of uh, nature, in fact, there is, there is already a question uh, uh, received by, by us. Uh, so we're going to answer that. Yeah. Again, the uh, issue of rising, uh, it will be uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in terms of pricing, it's all global anyway. Uh, it, 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 uh, up any is a uh, global market determination. Yeah, good afternoon, Dr. Sri. Uh, this is Andrew Ambrose. Um, I was colleagues with friends on the left side, I spent uh, eight years as an NGO CSO, I represented the indigenous people to the United Nations. But today, I, I am on this side with the traditional customary institutions. Um, we are the Dayak International Organization. And our delegation here recently announced a suit against uh, a traditional sogit against Petronas, claiming damages of 300 over a million for 43 years of ecological destruction to Sabah. Um, thank you very much for inviting us. I have three questions here, Dr. Sri. How is Sabah government demanding the US 100 billion commitment from the Paris Agreement committed by developing countries or known as the Global North? Where and who is going to help us with redeveloping our so good destruction of our forests, destruction of mangroves through the natural process because of climate change? COP26. The global North governments demanded the global, sorry, the global South governments were not in the round table with the global North and the global North has not committed one single cent of their commitment since Paris Agreement 2015. Is the state government taking any position regarding this matter? Second question is, that to three, how far are you aware if there are any other carbon projects being run in Sabah by NGOs, by other stakeholders, by private sectors, which can also be opposition to your initiatives or can be included to benefit the initiatives. Third question, would this deal hamper the Heart of Borneo project, because Heart of Borneo is mentioned in COP26 through the Malaysian representative of Keta, Dr. Ross D. And Heart of Borneo receives 4 million euro as mentioned in the Malaysian report to the UNFCC titled NDC. Orang asal receives only 200 million saja. So three questions combined, globally themed and locally, very, very important for us as traditional customary people to understand. Thank you. Well, thank you for those uh, concerns. Uh, number one, the issue on uh, compensation claim uh, uh, from the 100 billion uh, committed by the, the developed countries. Um, the state government uh, don't have a, doesn't have a direct role on that. Uh, but the indigenous people affected can raise up the issue and uh, put representation to claim for that. And uh, I think what the state government can do is to endorse that claim. So that's how we can do it. help you. Uh, the issue 
the other issue was uh, what was it again? Are there any other oh. projects? Yeah. Before uh, this, uh, if you read NCA? the if you read yesterday's headlines uh, by the former director of Conservative Forest Samanan, uh, he said that they have been. Uh, they have been dealings uh, in carbon uh, trading uh, a long time ago. Uh, some didn't work. Uh, some uh, uh, did work. Uh, but these are small, small uh, uh, trials. Lah. Uh, before the global concern become a, an issue of global concern like what it is now. Uh, even way back in the 90s, there was this issue, carbon trading, uh, but we, we did not get any benefit because there was no proper platform at the time. Third one? Third one. Uh, will this deal affect the current heart of Bonio projects no. where they are also asking for money from EU? Uh, no. Uh, that is the heart of Borneo uh, is a, a specific area. Uh, it may or may not. Uh, it depends because the forest conservator, they are the one who will decide uh, which of the TPS uh, actually assign. Uh, yeah. But whatever it is, um it does not it does not uh, affect whatever arrangement that they have made uh, separately uh, okay uh, uh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen lady, yeah. allow us to take maybe one or two more after this we're gonna do the press conference okay hi my name is ruth i'm from zero waste sabah so i'm just asking on behalf of people in the zoom there's this concern they require that, um, can, could you please introduce in detail the two companies that are getting 30% of the revenue for 100 years? Could you please introduce in detail the two companies that are getting 30% of the revenue for 100 years? <laughs> There's only one company. Uh, there was a mistake by somebody the mention about Terra Australia has nothing to do with that. Uh, only one company. Okay, yeah. And this company yeah. Only is... two parties. Yeah. Can you introduce, can you tell us uh, more about the company? Because what we have uh, heard is that the Hawk Standard Private Limited only has a paid up capital of 1,000 US. That, that is not true. Uh, Hawk Standard is a global player. Uh, it is... Uh, back up by uh, domestic holding and uh, it is involved in uh, what we call the private uh, uh, PE funding lah, yeah? uh, all over the world. Yeah. You see, this don't look at the uh, companies these days as conventional company. You must have big an uh, office. You must have hundred thousand employees. The imp no, now this is uh, uh, millennium. These are in the era of of uh, internet. Okay, so the, the way you look at things before and now. Uh, must be appropriate to the condition of today. Uh, we're very much aware of that, uh, yeah. Datuk Sri, because we are very much aware what carbon trading is all about. We're very much aware about the failures of other, um, uh, what is this, uh, agreements that had happened because mm. the whole thing about the carbon trading is that the rich country buys from the poorer countries of uh, the you know, trade with the carbons and all that. This mm. is where our biggest concern is. Mm. But we wanted to know more about the company and all that because, as you said, 
these companies nowadays, they don't need big offices and all that. They don't need a lot of people to help to, to mend the, the jobs and all that. But at the same time, there are a lot of cons as well. So, I mean, broad daylight, we were conned where, as you know, MA63 was concerned. So to us, this is like, we're still struggling. Yeah. So this is where our concern lies. So uh, because yeah, the leaders brought us where we were. So you as a leader, we want to get as much as we can now out of the company that you have signed this deal with. Okay. Uh, don't worry, I kind of spent then a few little jobs. And uh, we know that it's not this book. Okay, uh, so I I agree with you totally. We don't need to go again uh, and then uh, we will face a lot of Hello, hi, Dato. My name is Ben, representing myself. <laughs> Basically, what we do, we actually do a lot of domestic or ISP or requirement clients for the state. I mean, for the most accomplished companies. I know of this other thing. My question here is this. All these terms are it's more like a franchise, franchise so many percent, fifty percent, fifty percent, but uh, benefiting uh, the company will be more in Singapore, in Sabah. My question is that right? I remember those days. A lot of big companies are actually engaged in this thing. On the United Kingdom, many of them. My big question is, um, if in this case that not government views the state, why don't they also engage themselves by right? when? Where have all the money gone to? Because they dealing directly with the foundation is all by the resolution. This particular income that you know the, the foundation should be also be given to the state. If they are still engaged with the country. But I, I remember I was told this company actually was discontinued a couple of years ago. So maybe something on the not only the horrors that you know, try to capitalize the income from it, but the foundation industry which actually requires and also the environment impact are not very important. Right? For the government to get involved and to get some share of it and get that state. So, thank you. Yeah, okay, um, you are right. Uh, uh, at the moment, uh, we don't have the mechanism. Uh, and everybody can set up their own whatever. Uh, but I agree with you that there should be uh, the, the government should get. Part of it, okay, and uh, I guess they have to pay taxes anyway if they do what they want. That is another issue. <laughs> one last one for me is not a question, but three. Yeah, go ahead. I would like to invite you to a forum with a, with a team of NGOs, a group of NGOs based in Sabah, and um, we would be very um, appreciative if you would be able to spend. An hour to, to speak with the chose some political. Yeah. And uh, we will follow up with result uh, with a formal invitation. Okay. I have uh, no uh, problem. Uh, 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 we have a single uh, 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 well, members of NGOs, I think, and ladies and gentlemen, okay. uh, uh, they want us. Just a minute. Dr. Uh, Martin wants to speak. Uh, 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 just one uh, thank you, JC, for maybe just share my thought about NCR. As I have earlier stated, I have served in New Zealand now, I have a and I'm extremely mentioned that uh, we have interested in what is done in the industry. Now, the market of concerning NCR, that Dr. JC is in the quality position. We spoke about three, five, and four percent. That's exactly which has been addressed by the Department of Forest when the Forest Management was 
enacted in 1960. If you just get to look and read section 5 all the way to section 15 of the enactment, it is specifically provided there that before an area is to be gazetted as a forest reserve, an inquiry has to be made on NCR. This has been done. That's why the present photo protection area is now a gazetted forest reserve. This forest reserve also went through the demand and the debated the past and the day. So, why are we now, why are you now raising the issue of the offset when the matter of NCR is settled way back when it was when it was when it was, when it was accepted by 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 the by the by the forest by the government? There are many cases decided by the highest court of the land on claim of NCR on total protected forest. And I'm sad to say all those claims have been rejected. And I'm just saying, uh, you look at, you go to the Google, look for uh, land, land law journal, uh, current law journal, it speak, it informs you why NCR cannot listen to the claim anymore on a totally protected forest reserve. So we are speaking, Dr. Jerry is speaking from, from the point of view of what the law said. So, what can we do when the law says so? Unless you want to reach that and say, oh, we go away with all the strike. Then only the Dewan Balandigi can rectify. But at this point in time, the law has spoken, it is clear. Look at section 5 all the way to section 15. It gives you why the forest reserve, as it is now, is totally protected from you. And there is no longer any case. But in any case, we have been speaking here. All we have been hearing, there is the provision for red in the NCA. There is a provision for SDG in the NCA. That takes care of the native community soil. Because that exactly is intended by the SDG and by the red. That no, the native will not be going up for uh, compensation for what they need to be. I see you're sitting here. Can I have to do it? No, let's leave you. Are you saying that uh, the door is not there? Uh, good morning. Good morning. That's true. Uh, I do agree to the grant of the NCR, but the tactic that we are talking about is about the Pakaman. Ordinary Pakaman that we want to do the deal. It's not about the people. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, let's see. I, if I am. Forgive me for my knowledge. But if I read the response of the 11 NG code, there is mention there on NCR. So when you speak of NCR, then you should be looking at the forest language because what is involved here is the four total protected forest. We cannot run away from the law. I am speaking from the perspective of law. I mean, we can all be so, 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 so angry because we are native. I am a native, and Dr. Jeff is native. Many of us are native. But if the law has spoken, what can you do? The law is the law is the law. You do not make an ass of the law. But you can ask the law. Yes, but you should be very, very thankful that there is provision in the NCA that SDG. You know what the SDG? But this is not an education compliant, my dear friend. SDG is only another and we are left behind. I am really speaking from the perspective of law. Don't get me wrong. I am speaking from the perspective of law. I hope you all understand that. Thank you very much. Thank you for your opinions. Thank you for your thoughts. Thank you. Uh, okay, we are still friends. Huh? <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you very much.
everyone uh, God bless you. Thank you. Is that the I don't have a big I don't have all the
Manipulating the press. Then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm educating you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that there uh, is uh, transparency because eventually this will be utilized. Uh, they will use more no, the for the That's why you can hear them well. I have 
So we're going to end this session in, in 10 minutes. Thank you, everyone. This video will uh, any videos to be more in the Recording stuff.